Chrissy, thank you. On Monday, a shooting at a private Christian elementary school in Nashville uh, left at least three children and three adults dead. The shooter was shot and killed by police. Well, this morning, San Diego County Sheriff Kelly Martinez is joining us. Uh, thank you for, for being here. It is so unfortunate that you guys need yeah. to prepare and our law enforcement needs to prepare for this now. And I was thinking about as we're watching the body cam footage come out, they were ready. Mm. They were ready for this. Yeah, and we are too here locally. We work really closely with all of our local, state, and federal partners to train and practice. And uh, you know, our response, we don't wait for backup, we go right in. And that's what happened with our Fallbrook shooting here recently. But you know, really the best response is, uh, you know, being um, prevention. And, and the way to prevent it is people need to tell us when they see something, when they see mm. something in social media or somebody leaves a note, or you know, teachers will sometimes call us when they see something disturbing in a homework, a piece of homework from a student. and. And we act really quickly to um, understand if that's really a threat, if there's a problem. Yeah, there, so. I'm glad you bring that up because with yeah. almost every one of the shootings, which we cover way too often, yeah. uh, there's always, when in hindsight, the red flags. And there's always somebody that knew, somebody that said something, something on social media. And you wonder why it wasn't caught sooner. Is it just because people are not saying anything or you just don't think that somebody mm. would be capable of doing something like this? I think it's both. I think people are, uh, worried about coming forward if it's not really a threat. They're concerned about bringing something out that might not be a problem. But, you know, we're really good at I identifying if it is a problem or not a threat. Um, and so, you know, it's better to let us know. Yeah. And we have seen, you, you don't take any chances if there's no. a school threat by, it, whether it's, there's writing on the wall, a bathroom wall, or maybe there's a note, something on social media. There is an investigation, there's a lockdown, and you everyone lets the parents know. So you just, these days, you just don't take any chances. I'd, I'd rather be safe, right. right? Yeah, have it investigated rather than result in a tragedy. Right. So. Um, and I want and I want to turn to this. It, obviously, we were talking about uh, the type of guns that was on the the shooter. You guys have been doing these buyback programs for unwanted guns off the street, uh, no questions asked. Right. And I think your most recent one happened in San Marcos. Can you talk a little bit about that program and it, the success of it? Yeah, we really think every gun that's taken off the street could potentially. Uh, stop a crime. So uh, this weekend we had another event in San Marcos. We got 104 guns off the street. Mm. Uh, two of those were assault weapons, so it was really good that we got those off the street. But we've added a component to this now with gun safety and gun safety education. And so now we're giving away gun locks as well and oh. lock boxes. So you can get those free uh, as well if you want to come in. If you have a gun, you want to keep safe in your home, mm -hmm. come buy our gun buybacks and pick up one of those. Mm. As if you didn't have enough to deal with on your plate. Yes. Uh, this this year, so far this year, we have reported and talked about a handful of deputies uh, been arrested on allegations of misconduct. And we know so much of law enforcement is, is about trust, it's right. about trust with the community. So how do you handle something like that where you're also worried about the safety of the community and you're dealing with guns and, and school shootings? Well, you know, we really need to be transparent with our communities and let them know when, you know, and hold each other accountable, hold ourselves accountable, and then be honest about it when it happens. So we're doing that. Um, a big part of this, too, has been concerning to me with the types of arrests that have happened with our staff is wellness of our staff. And, mm. you know, if there's alcohol involved or, or drugs and things like that, we need to be concerned about why that's happening. So we're working on that as well. I mean, you bring up wellness and you have uh, created the new sheriff's wellness unit. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah, we've always historically had peer support and a chaplaincy program, counseling teams, things like that. But we've never had a unified uh, group of uh, staff who are dedicated to just the wellness of our staff. And so that's what we're creating. We're going to assign a sergeant next month and that sergeant will start um, filling that team. And we've got a location where we're going to mm create as a wellness unit for our staff and just focused on how to make sure our staff is healthy because we can't really serve our communities if we're not healthy ourselves. That's correct. And I feel yeah. like everything that you're talking about, it's it's these steps to be more proactive instead of reactive. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Sheriff. <laughs> to take a deep breath. Mm. Take a deep breath for you. <laughs> yeah, no, nothing going on in the Sheriff's Department. Right <laughs> nothing, nothing at all. <laughs> Thank you for being here and giving Thank us you. all the updates. Always Thank good you to both. see you. Yeah, you too. Thank you. Thank you. All right, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back.